Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems. Today's system is from the user Spoofy in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending in their simulation but that all said and done let's hop straight into this. So here we are it's this simulation here the HWO 275 AB system. So let's go ahead and see what they have for us here. Okay let's just reopen it again so the description appears always a bit of a weird bug that one. There it is okay so HWO275 is a distant binary star system located in the constellation Aquarius, located nearly uh, 53,000 light years away, so uh, 16,250 parsecs from the sun. It's two stars, so we have the first one here. So this is the A star, and then over there I'm guessing is the B star. Yes, it is. Okay. So, the orbit of the Milky Way almost opposite the solar system, narrowly avoiding concealment by the galactic halo. The system lies between Norma and the um, Scutum Centaurus arms. Okay, cool. Both stars are G-type, sun-like in character, together from the binary system. Okay, so the main star here, A, is slightly larger and brighter. 1.9 solar, or 1.09 solar masses, and 1.4 luminosity. The other star is 1.02 mass, and just under 1.1 luminosity. Okay, very nice. Good stuff. Turn the goggles off, you get a good look at both stars. Okay, looking good. So, bound in an eccentric orbit around a shared barrier centre, the pair completes one circuit every 164 years, with their separation ranging from 31.5 AU, comparable to Neptune's orbit, to 45.4 AU, similar to Pluto's. Okay, so on to the planets. We have the first one here. All the way down here, and okay. Now, the simulation's actually running as well, very nice. Okay. So, um, this one hosts the first star hosts five confirmed planets uh, designated HWO 275A, B to F. The fourth for planet E is a particular interest of a life bearing world. Okay, cool. So, the first one here is a uh, Make a Tour. Tour? Yeah, I'm not going to struggle with some of these. Right. The innermost planet, a small scorched world with a heavily cratered surface and an iron nickel core comprising up to 60% of its mass. It rotates twice per orbit, giving it a 41.5 day. Um, and an 83, well, 83 day year. Okay, cool. So, comparable to your Mercury. That's kind of your Mercury kind of like up here. Okay, second planet out. We're over, over here. So, desert planet. M Mui? I'm not sure how to say the accent with the A there. Uh, a desert planet with a large iron core and mineral atmosphere. Only 60% as massive as that as Mars. Active volcanism supplies the CO2 needed to sustain its tenuous air. It spins rapidly, completing 10 rotations per orbit. For a 14.3 day day and 153 day year. Very nice. Okay. Looking good. Okay, next up. Object D. A hot, humid super earth with a dense atmosphere of nitrogen, CO2, and water vapor, plus traces of methane and sulfur dioxide. Averaging just under 100 Celsius, it could support extreme fires at limited tenox and scarce liquid water to reduce its habitability. Of the system's three hatter world, it's the least accommodating. Ah, very nice. Okay. We get a uh, sort of surface view here. There you go, so a whitish coloured sky. There you go, you can see the B star in the sky as well. Very nice. Okay. Looking good. Cool. Has a moon as well. Once a protoplanet displaced by complex gravitational interactions, it was later captured into the orbit. Its crater surface and composition resemble those of the first planet. Okay. So a Mercury S kind of world there. Very nice. Okay, so we are now heading to the third object, which is the blue one here, object E, which is a one of note. How do we say that? Tomato Gung, gung. I, I have no idea how to spell that or pronounce that. So there we go. So Hattel Earth-like world, the most Earth-like and Hattel planet in the system, with a temperature climate average 24.6 degrees and oceans covering 76 percent of its surface. Here, life has flourished in advanced civilization. Very nice as well. I like the use of the sandy yellow colour as well. I was like using that on my own ones. Very nice. Got some good city lights in there as well. Looking good. Let's get a surface view of this. So there it is. Looking good. There's the star. Very nice. Yeah, looking good. It's the full surface view. Oh yeah. Very nice. So. 
God, this might be the hardest pronouncing system of all time. There's so many. I am I'm lost of how to spell pronounce these. Um, so the moons here formed after a giant impact early in the planet's history. These twin moons occupy resonant stable orbits and resemble Earth's own moon in composition. Nice. We've got one moon there, second moon over here. There you go. Looking good. Nice. Back to our head next. The 275 pace. That's this guy here. A gas giant. Oh yes, here it is. Between Neptune and Saturn in mass, and the largest planet in the system, orbiting furthest from the star with a 7.2 year period, it boosts a family of six icy moons. Um, of these, uh, one of them displays dramatic cryovolcanisms, spewing mineral rich ices. Okay. Yeah, across its surface. Alright. So that's the one with that name there. So that is this moon. It's quite dark here, isn't it, with the uh, bubbles on. So there you go. And a view of it. Cryovolcanism there. Look at the other moons as well. Here they all are. Very nice. Looking good. Over there. Cool. And then another moon at the edge. So fairly similar in uh, appearance to most of them. And the last one. They go a lot further away. Okay. Cool. So that's all of those guys. That's all of the planets around the first star. And then I'm guessing the remainers are just uh, dwarf planet asteroid objects. Looks like it, yeah. Okay. They're not mentioned in the description. Yeah, they're numbered as well. Yeah, these are asteroids. Going by our own sort of systems logic. So yeah, I believe these are asteroids. Okay. Let's have a quick look at a few of them, but. Yeah, well that one has a little uh, little moon as well. There you go. So asteroids slash probably series like dwarf planets probably actually as well. Nice. Okay, so there's those guys. There's an asteroid belt around there as well. So on to the second star now. So it hosts four known planets. And then one Hatable world. Okay. So the first of the planets. Tidy lock created world with a massive... Ooh, it's quite bright here, isn't it? Ooh, ho, ho. There you go. There's a... Scorching surface. Oh, it's lost in the glare, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So, uh, where are I? Created world, massive iron nickel core making up 600 of its mass. Both its date and year last 16.6 .6 Earth days. Okay, yeah. Cool. It's on the surface, as you'd expect. It's pretty bright. There you go. Scorching surface. There you go. Okay, very good. So, Next up, second object out. Rehua. Reha? Is that how you say it? Volcanic medium sized planet, 0 0.7 Earth masses, shoulder and thick CO2. Atmosphere reminiscent of Venus, surface climb up to 500. So this, yeah, literally is Venus. Underneath, okay. Very, very close Venus analog. Nice. Cool. Next up, we have Maru here. A habitable planet with 0.6 Earth masses and a moderately thick nitrogen CO2 water vapour atmosphere. Its average temperature is 35 Celsius and its surface hosts large liquid water bodies. It supports off-world settlements established by the Tumataganes with terraforming efforts underway. So they're from the other worlds, aren't they? Yep. And then this one over here. Likely formed a giant impact. This cratered body resembles Earth's moon. Nice. Cool. No, all the way over here. Another gas world, I'm guessing. Yeah. Massive ice giant, 13 Earth masses, with a 0.4 rotation driving extreme weather. Its supersonic winds exceed 1500 miles per hour. They're the fastest in the system. Nice. We've got this one over here as well. Okay. Capture dwarf planet in the blue, the blue ices. Okay. Striking blue ices. Debris belts. Both stars have extensive asteroid regions, the Har belt around the main star and the Rongamal belt around uh, the second star. Each populated by asteroids and dwarf planets of very composition. Okay, so that's what we saw earlier, isn't it? So that's everything the description has for us. So we can have a quick navigation of these guys as well. But as we can see, they are all fairly standard. Yeah, they're all uh, 
the generic rocks. So there you go. So yeah, lots of points of realism on this one. There's no crazy exotic colours. You know, it's what you'd expect really of a system, isn't it? No, not every system has to be completely colour funky. So there you go. There's your Venus analog underneath. So you know, yeah, looking good. Hot world there. If we get a lineup of the full lot. So there you go. You got your two uh, two stars A and B, and you got your gas giant. Got a nice giant. There's one Earth-like world in there with good conditions. You got the Venus analog here as well got a few Mercury analog, you've got kind of like a hot Mars kind of world here, there's your second lifelike world as well, patches of water on it, better than nothing, you've got the scorching hot rocks and Mercury like worlds as well, hot grated worlds, then you got a, a varying set of dwarf worlds in there, very nice, there you go, so yeah, good little realistic system that one, I like that, so there you go, apologies for the pronunciations on these ones, but these are some wild names, so yeah, I'll be here all day trying to figure those out so there you go so both stars nice binary pair looking very very nice so there you go mm, looking good Let's see if we can get a good view of some of them so maybe from this dwarf world here you can get both stars in the same shot yeah there you go ah so if we just say land here have a little look around you can see the hassles don't see both stars in the sky there a better look at a bit. Oh, I wonder if you can get light from both stars. I mean, how? I mean, these are only what Neptune distance apart, aren't they? Roughly Neptune to Pluto. So the sunlight from one star should reach the other system. So we go. It's only objects on both sides. So okay. So this world here. So yeah, the ice giant. Does it receive light from the second star? It, it doesn't look like it does. Goggles on and off. Is that? Oh, oh, there you go. So goggles on. Yes, it does. Goggles off. It doesn't. Yeah. So light from both stars. There you go. Stars are quite dim with the goggles off and on, but there you go. And behind us, you can see the second star in the distance there as well. Then the goggles off, you get a better view of the stars, but then the planet dims on that side. So there you are. Very nice. Yeah, looking good. I liked it. So again, a massive thank you to the creator of the system, Spoofy, for sending this one in. I enjoyed that. Nice, realistic one, um, as he stated in his little description when he sent it to me as well. Very good. Yeah, enjoyed that. And yeah, guys, let us know what you think down below of the system in the comments as well. Keen to hear your feedback as always. Um, let Spoofy know how uh, you thought that system was. And yeah, that all said done, everybody. Make sure you guys all have a great day out there. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.